This is actually a pretty simple GRE uh, quantitative comparison question, but I'm going to use it to actually illustrate a lot of concepts that help with a wide variety of GRE problems. Just as a quick refresher, if you're watching this and have no idea what a GRE quantitative comparison problem is, we are given that uh, x minus 2y times x plus 2y equals 4, and we've got to decide which one is bigger. Between uh, x squared minus 4y squared and 8. Um, quantity in column A is bigger. Quantity in column B is bigger. They're the same, or we can't tell. Those are the answer choices A, B, C, and D, respectively. Now, if you've studied a lot and you have a good eye for patterns, you'll recognize this as a difference of squares. Meaning, this product x minus 2y times x plus 2y is equal to x squared minus 4y squared. If you recognize that, you don't need me to teach you how to do this problem. If you don't recognize that, you need a strategy that's going to help you get somewhere. And as always, the best strategy is to try to plug in numbers. Let's try to plug in y equals 0. If y is 0, that means we have x minus 0, x plus 0 equals 4. Simple enough, x squared is 4. Um, we then could say x is plus or minus 2, but we don't even need to do that because if y is 0 and x squared is 4, then the expression in column A is simply 4 minus 0, which is smaller than 8. In the absence of any better information, then we're going to go with quantity in column B being greater. Now, you could have also perhaps tried x equals 0. A quick calculation will tell you 0 minus 2y and 0 plus 2y will yield negative 4y squared. And if this is supposed to be equal to 4, that's impossible because y squared cannot be negative 1. This demonstrates a flaw in the pick numbers strategy, which is basically it doesn't always work. And also, when we have plugged in y equals 0 and concluded that the quantity in column A was 4 and the quantity in column B was 8, we know for sure that A is wrong, and we know for sure that C is wrong because it's certainly true that they're not equal and it's certainly true that the quantity in column A is not the bigger one. We're down to two choices. Quantity in column B is bigger and the answer cannot be determined. Because this is a question early on <laughs> um, you can see it's a number two uh, even though that doesn't really have as much meaning on the computer based test typically the easier questions will not 
have D as their answer. The easier questions will be able to be determined. Now I'm not going to leave you without a demonstration of the difference of squares. So something that you absolutely must know if you want to get some of the harder algebra problems correct is uh, the following computation. Now I'm going to treat the whole thing on the left as A This is contrary to what most of you learned in grade school as FOIL, but bear with me. Of course, I'm running out of screen room. Um, I'm going to copy that over. So basically, I'm taking x minus 2y and treating it as a single number, and I'm distributing it to the x and the 2y. So this whole thing gets distributed here and here. Then what happens? Uh, x times x is x squared minus 2yx plus x to y minus 2y times 2y minus 2yx and plus x to y actually cancel each other out because order of multiplication don't doesn't matter both of these are equal to well, the, the first one is equal to minus 2xy, and the second one is equal to plus 2xy. Now, the total result is x squared minus 4y squared. Now, why did I skip out on the whole FOIL method of factoring? It's basically because FOIL uh, has too many steps that you do in your head so that gives you about a 90% chance of distributing correctly, and I would prefer a 100% chance of distributing correctly. And the other reason is that FOIL is specific to uh, a binomial times a binomial, meaning we have 1, 2 times 1, 2 terms. If you didn't go to grade school in the United States or went to a grade school where they didn't teach you what FOIL was, uh, consider yourself lucky, but I'll spoil it for you uh, and say F stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, L stands for last. So the idea is that you would multiply the first being the X's, the outer, being the x and the 2y, the inner being the 2y and the x, and the last being the 2y and the 2y. Now that was a long video, and it was meandering, but remember that you always should try to plug in numbers. You can eliminate a, B, C, or D from plugging in numbers. Uh, something squared is always positive. And then here's this distributing business. Hope you learned something.